Six nights on Spain's Mediterranean coast in six of the city's top eateries, as recommended by local luxury experts. Let's start devouring. Salud. Salud. Since we're in Barcelona, we had to take you on one of our restaurant tours. And we're starting today on Valentine's Day. So Phil and I got a babysitter for the kids and we're gonna have a romantic night out. And we're going up there. So against the backdrop of super yachts, we're heading upstairs to Torre de Altemar. We got a Michelin star right there. We are going all the way up. I have no idea how high. I actually have vertigo, so I'm feeling a little nervous. I have to, to just touch the railings and stuff. <laughs> Torre del Tamar is the only place at the top of one of the port cable car towers. It was built in 1929 for the Universal Exposition, which was a world's fair and the second one to be hosted by Barcelona. Little did we know as we looked out from the elevator that some of these super yachts were just days away from being seized as part of the international sanctions on the Russian oligarchs who owned them. And because it's a special night, Valentine's Day, there is a special tasting menu. So there's nothing to do, nothing to choose. It's all pre-fee, prefix. <laughs> It's all prefix, and so is the wine. We don't have to choose that either because we're having the wine pairing too. So you're telling me we literally just sit back and eat and drink? Yep. That's a first. I'm into it. I love it. Happy Valentine's Day, baby. Happy Valentine's Day, starting off with a little rosé cava. So this restaurant is 250 feet in the air, Michelin-starred and specializing in modern Mediterranean cuisine, and I can't wait to see what they bring us. We're gonna jump right to the aphrodisiac. We're gonna have oysters. This is charcoal grilled tuna with artichoke sauce and chiso, and I hope an edible flower. Very charcoal -y. Yeah, the charcoal is like not right away. It comes out after you chewed a little bit. This looks really good. It's got some roe on top. It's gilt head bream fish. Brine fish? Bream fish. <laughs> so thinly sliced. If I had one word for that, it would be delicate. It's almost watery. That is delicate. And this is a really good time to introduce our second wine course. It's a white of the right varietals. This one looks really yummy. It's a mushroom puree. I'm sure it's much fancier than that. With some truffle and then this is a poached egg. Favorite way to have an egg. Mmm. That's warm. It reminds me a little bit of this restaurant we went to in France on our river cruise. You should check out that episode because they had something similar. Sometimes when they poach eggs, they have a hard time fully cooking the white, so you end up with that slimy white, but there's none of that here. It, mm, it tastes like a snow day from school. This is cannelloni with lobster and prawns. So many things that I love. <laughs> We're switching it up to red. This is a Rioja. <laughs> We're a little bit confused because we thought he was asking us if we wanted the steak or the fish and we said one of each and <laughs> we both have two different kinds of fish so we're a little bit confused but it looks good. <laughs> I can't even say that I think this is the turbo because it's so stupid that we don't even know what we're eating. Yeah. <laughs> Here's our steak. So confusion, it's more clear now that uh, we had both fish first and now our steak. A lot of marble on this steak. And I'm gonna hold my fork the European way. I love seeing a steak that has all that marbling like that because of that has so much flavor. We've been struck by Cupid's arrow and it's sparkly. I have no idea what's inside. See, Brooklyn would love this. She loves fruit shaped dessert. Mm. You know what this is? Cheesecake. It's like a cheesecake but it's like almost like a marshmallow cheesecake. First restaurant in the books. I have to say the standout here are the views. The views are spectacular and that's worth a visit up here. We're heading out, we're in the elevator. I'm sitting down because it helps with my vertigo. <laughs> we'll see you at the next restaurant tomorrow night. We're going to a little local place here called Bota Fumera and it is a very seafood forward place where they get all of their seafood fresh every single day from the fish market, but that's not why we're going there tonight. We're going there because it was recommended to us as the best paella in Barcelona. And obviously you cannot come to Barcelona without trying the paella. That's 
right, it's one of the most iconic dishes for Spain. Botafumero has been around since 1975 and is considered by many to be Barcelona's top seafood restaurant. They take full advantage of the seafood auction and consistently bring back the day's best selections. No matter where you sit, you get a great view with lots of positive Spanish energy that's been built over decades of distinction within the city. This is a private room where they have a lot of celebrity people come in and visit. You mentioned specifically again, Beyonce, Antonio Banderas, and a few others I'm not allowed to repeat. Martini? Did I martini? Uh, no, por favor. Si. Sí. Y voila. Yes. Mm. Y voila. Salud. Salud. Ooh, that's the best martini we've had in Spain. <laughs> this is our next martini. We mostly got the calamari for the kids because they don't always love all seafood, but they always love calamari. And since this restaurant is really well known for their seafood and their paella, we had to get the seafood paella and the black rice paella, which is made from squid ink. There, Here we go, diving in to dos paella. Dos paella? Is that not right? Dos paellas. Dos paellas. Let's do this. Is the traditional seafood paella, and this, they use a different kind of rice, not a borzio that we usually do in the U.S. That we find as an imported Italian rice. You actually don't find this in the U.S. at all. Also, it's more brown than yellow. The saffron that we have found in the U.S. is more yellow, and that is the not the freshest saffron. We learned that at the market yesterday when we were touring with our guy Christina from Oh My God. Oh yes, all these flavors are melded together. I'm used to so many different layers with paella, but this is more like homogenous. It's this one bite where all of these flavors are melded together and it is so flavorful. It's salty, it's seafoody, and you get the amazing body from the rice. This is just, this is so good. Oh my gosh, yeah. I have got to recommend the black rice over the traditional seafood. The traditional seafood is really good, but this black rice paella is out of this world. This is my favorite. I have a clear favorite, clear winner. I love this black ink paella. Yay, even the blackberries are Basically, these are strawberries, but probably the most natural and authentic strawberries there could be with Cream. and it's definitely toasted, so this is kind of like strawberries under a creme brulee. Very much like strawberries under a creme brulee. Very crunchy, very creamy like a creme brulee. And the strawberries are almost a little bit more tart, but in a sweet way, is that a thing? I don't know. I think this is coconut cake, but it's like this super spongy, awesome. Yeah, that's really good. Coconut cake. I have been seeing these little tiny strawberries at other restaurants and been so curious. And they're a little pricier than you would imagine for just strawberries. So I want to know what it's all about. What? It's interesting. It's like the strawberry itself has a smokiness to it. It is like a, a bitterness and a sweetness all at once. It's really interesting. I think I understand why they're so special. I think it's like Bubblegum. Ah, Bubblegum. All right, I accept that. I actually got like, if I just isolated the strawberry, it was almost a little bit of a smokiness with the strawberry, like a charcoal taste of the strawberry. And with this final bite of chocolate, the night's dinner is over. So we'll see you tomorrow. We've made our way down to the marina and we are gonna have a great Mediterranean cuisine at Barceloneta. This place is known for great seafood and what better place to enjoy it than right here on the water. Let's go. It's gonna be a great view too. As you step inside from Port Vell Marina, you start to get a feel for the size of this restaurant. The lobby itself, which is a veritable wine cellar, is about as big as many restaurant dining rooms. But here, it's just a place to check in after checking out some wine-making antiques. As you're escorted to a table on the upper level, you walk by these sprawling lobster tanks that our kids nicknamed Death Row. You walk right by the kitchen on your way to your table, and this really gets your mouth watering. The main dining area is spacious and perfectly decorated for the feel of the marina. Classy, not whimsical. If it's on the chilly side, the flame heaters will keep you warm on the patio, which is really the place to sit if you want the best views. Something about sitting next to a bunch of super yachts makes me want to drink champagne. So I think we're gonna get a bottle of cava. Salud. Salud. 
So I looked up their Instagram account and there's this photo that's making me drool. It is a sea bass tartare. There is a lot of great options in here. I think we're gonna have to get a couple of little bites. Love to try the sea bass tartare and definitely the octopus. Baby baked scallops win. Oh, and also, sorry, calamari. That's everything? I think that's it. That's all she wrote. That sounds like a fantastic order. Well done. My favorite thing that I have discovered in Barcelona, it's tomato bread. It's a thin slice of bread toasted with tomato rubbed on top of it with olive oil drizzled on it. I think there's some garlic and salt and bomb too. It's so good. We actually prepared our own tomato bread in our tapas episode. So make sure to subscribe, follow, and have that notification button pressed because you don't want to miss that episode too. It was a lot of fun. All right, let's dig into this sea bass tartare with this incredible squid ink aioli. Got to get a little bit of everything. This is a phenomenal dish. Such a great contrast of flavors. You're right. You can't taste really everything because it's all mixed together. I really like it. I knew I was gonna hit it out of the park ordering this. It just looked so good. Mm. It also has a hint of Tabasco in it. So that is a crazy flavor profile. This is the octopus and I don't blame Cole. He wants to be the first one to try it. It looks interesting, amazing. Yeah, that's really good. It tastes just like like calamari, except it's not fried and it's much bigger. It has a lot more flavor than calamari. Now it's my turn. So many times you go to a restaurant and the octopus is very flavorful but a bit chewy. This is nothing like that. And these flavors, this is like a chili powder that's uh, soaked with olive oil. And it's just a great amount of seasoning, so it really lets the octopus shine. Not what I expected at all. When they said baby scallops baked, I thought it would be baked in mayonnaise and have sort of, you know, like a burnt crust of mayonnaise on top. But this is even better. This looks fresh. It's hot. You can see the steam coming out of it. Really great flavors all around. This is good. I'm really glad we got it. I think it balances out the other dishes we got as well. It's like a high quality crab cake, where again, you don't have all the fillers. You don't have all the mayonnaise. You just really get the crab meat. This is the scallop version of that. Yeah, that's delicious. I think that was a perfect amount of food. I'm a little bit stuffed. Since this is lunch, let's skip dessert, liquid dessert, and let's walk down the pier and check out some of these really cool yachts. When we asked our concierge for a place with a view, he said it doesn't get any better than this joint, El Zalet de Manui. We're gonna have Catalan and Mediterranean cuisine. This is incredible. I feel like we can see all of Barcelona and we can even see the Mediterranean. It's gorgeous. And right there, the biggest structure of all is La Sagrada Familia, probably the most famous, well-known building in Barcelona by the famous Gaudi. This is a little fritter. It's like our appetizer or like our bread service. And it is apple and cheese. You really don't get much apple, but that cheese is like a creamy bread cheese flavored. Mmm, <laughs> man, I feel like I'm at the fair. And they have a huge wine list. Croquettes are a very authentic and original cuisine for this region. And this one is full of Iberian ham. Look how melty it is inside. It's like a gravy. Mmm. These are incredible. These are good. It really is like a gravy with a crispy crust on the outside. Wow, these are insane. It's like an amazing buttery, crispy fried shell full of gravy. So cool, you are gonna love this because it is truffles on top and inside is veal and foie gras. Mm. Yeah, but you can definitely taste that truffle. Ooh, good. That's really good. You can taste all the pasta, all the truffles, all the meat. I really want to get the cannelloni because that is also a very traditional dish for cannellon cuisine. I said that wrong, didn't I? Cannellonian? If you know how to say it, please put it in the comments. I would say this is excellent. This is so delicious. And what I love about the cannelloni here in Barcelona is that the pasta itself is very thin. You almost don't notice that it's pasta at all. It's just more of a, uh, a wrap of a holder. 
but putting the veal inside, genius. And the foie gras is so subtle, it almost just creates texture, not a very strong flavor. This is a slow roasted lamb shoulder. It's like fall off the bone lamb, although I don't think there were any bones in there, but it's just super tender. Oh, it's a really good sauce too. It's like an onion reduction demi-glaze. I don't know what I'm talking about. But that's really good, super tender. We have to peel ourselves away from this gorgeous view, but the good news is we have more restaurants to visit. For dinner tonight, we're gonna to do something a little bit different. We've had American steak, we've had French steak, we've had Florentine steak, but we haven't yet had Spanish steak. So we're gonna to go to a Barcelona steakhouse. Let's go to Mr. Porter. The restaurant is located in Sir Victor, a hotel, but we came a little bit early. What do you do when you arrive early? You get some cocktails. And I got A.A. Pina, but you're gonna correct me. A.A. Pina is pineapple infused Bacardi, Carta Blanca, elderflower liqueur, mint, and cava. So it's a little bit bubbly and light and refreshing. Okay, Brooklyn, tell them what I got. You got Maracuja Mule. Very mm -hmm. close, Mara Maracuja Mule. Bombay Sapphire Gin, Bashan Fruit, Lime, Orange Honey, and Ginger Beer. With Purple Empire. You know, Bombay Sapphire has a lot of aromatics to it, but you mix that with some of these fruit juices and it's a really cool combination, I'm digging it. Once our table was ready, we headed from one great vibe to another. Just like the chic Sir Victor Hotel itself, Mr. Porter's one of the hippest places in the city. When you're in the mood for great atmosphere as much as great food, this is the joint. And although it is a steakhouse, their menu is packed with great vegetarian and seafood dishes, many of which are still cooked up in the wood-fired oven. Phil got us some beef carpaccio. He's in charge of ordering tonight. I'll be the first to try. This looks delicious, and there's a very thin slice for each of us. It's like roast beef. Just like tartar. For a second steak course, tartar with caviar. Brooklyn, you should try it first. It's delicious. I love that it has plenty of beluga caviar. That's really good because it delivers the right amount of saltiness to the steak and the flavor of caviar. Mommy's gotta get in on one of these Parmesan french fries. Mm. You know what I love about them? They're shoestring. Wow, look at this steak. This looks beautiful. It's a petite filet, they call it a lady filet. Not because they're sexist, I don't think, but because this place is called Mr. Porter, so they have the Mr. version and the lady version. So that's something. Anyway, they're splitting the regular filet mignon, and we're splitting the one that has the foie gras and demi-glaze on top. It's gonna be the juiciest, most flavorful bite of steak with foie gras I've ever had, I suspect. That's phenomenal. <laughs> Say what you will about every other place we've had steak, but this one's really, this is one of my favorite things that I've had in Barcelona to eat. Oh, Phil is so right. This is a really good steak. The medium rare makes it so juicy and the sauce, perfect balance of acid and sweet. Wow, I'm just realizing how much steak we had. We had a carpaccio, a tartare, a steak, and a steak. That's a lot of steak. Once again, we have had another really great dining experience here in Spain, and we've got one more restaurant left to check out. And we don't have to go far. That's why I put my big old heels on. We're just going downstairs to the hotel restaurant, Sulk. And that hotel is the Five Star Majestic, our home for the week we spent in Barcelona. It's perfectly located along one of the city's top boulevards for dining and shopping, and it features a full-service spa. Known as the Hotel of the Arts, it boasts an exceptional display of more than a thousand notable works of art. Rooms. Yeah, rooms, that's right. Ooh, this is nice. It's a really good sized living room and beautiful views out there on the balcony. And it leads right into this king-sized bedroom, closet space over there, and a really nice big full bathroom, five piece. And it's super convenient. We have an adjoining room with kids are right in here. They have this tiny little sitting area here and their bed could be a king, but as you see it now, it's two twins pushed together. And they have a really big walk-in closet. And their bathroom's not as big as ours, but it's still really nice. 
does the job, right? Well, goodbye for now. We are gonna get ready for dinner and then we're gonna tour Barcelona later. So stick with us. Sulk is a farm to table Catalan restaurant and it's like super fresh market ingredients every day. This is literally the entire menu. So the four of us to share are gonna get two starters, one of their paellas, and one of their meats. Now the wine list on the other hand is more substantial. Pretty big. You want a bottle of red maybe? So we've really experienced Catalan food this week and now we're going to experience the market fresh farm to table like Phil said. Also going really native with our drink choices. Phil is having cava, which is a Spanish bubbles. And I am having a red, a Catalan native red. This is actually a Cabernet Sauvignon Merlot blend. Salut. So our amuse-bouche tonight is a little codfish croquette. That's really good and there's some sweetness to it, I'd say. Mm -hmm. So this is covered in a Wellington crust. Look, this pate has little pistachios in it. Some pate is just like really smooth, but these are a lot of different flavors that are working together. Now onto one of these prawn croquettes. Look at that gooey, cheesy goodness. Oh, that filling is just amazing. So crunchy and crispy on the outside. That cheese is oozing out. I feel like this is like prawn foam inside. It, it's not just a prawn on top. It's got the flavoring inside too. I say the market fresh is best. We've had some good croquettes. This one might be the best. Love it, it looks so good and is the perfect color brown because it has that char. The rice just sits in the bottom and they don't stir it at all. Mm. And it has like a fish broth taste, like the rice had soaked up all the fish broth. In the United States, when you have paella, it, you can get the scent of say, saffron or the rice or something. And this, you just, you smell the Mediterranean. Did you notice that? It smells of seafood. Look at that bite. And that's perfect paella. I've made paella several times. Um, it's one of those things that's easy to learn, difficult to master. And they've clearly mastered it. This is incredible. Is that chocolate? Ending this night on a sweet note with a little marshmallow treat. If these restaurants are working up your appetite, be sure to check out our two other episodes from this trip where we take in the local sights and bites and where we scour the city in search of the top tapas. And if you're planning a Barcelona visit yourself, head over to followabc.com itineraries to download our full Barcelona destination guide for this trip.